Well, let's discuss this now with Nadia Adam. She's an analyst and Sahel Project Officer at the Institute for Security Studies. She joins us now from Niger's capital, Niamey. Thank you so much for joining us, Nadia. The previously unknown group, the Patriotic Movement for Safeguard and Restoration, or MPSR, obviously have conducted this coup. They say they acted in the nation's interest because uh, Burkina Faso was being racked by violence, particularly uh, beset by jihadist uh, movements. Is there any truth behind that reasoning? Well, the, the mutiny in, uh, in Burkina Faso is explained primarily by anger within the army in a context of high insecurity, as you mentioned. Uh, so on one hand, the army demand appropriate means to fight jihadi groups um, because they face many issues on the field uh, when it comes to equipment, uh, salaries aren't being paid on time, as well as supplies and also taking care of the families of those who are killed in combat. And the major latest incident we can talk about is the attack, uh, the attack in Inata in November, when uh, 70, uh, 57 members of security and defense forces were killed. This attack caused a wave of indignation in the country because it was learned that this detachment was waiting for material supplies, but also food for two weeks. Uh, and they had to rely on hunting wildlife to survive while on the field. And uh, this coup can also be placed in a context of persistent mistrust between the military uh, and the political in Burkina uh, since the fall of former president uh, Blaise Compaoré in, uh, in 2014 uh, and the dismantling of the security system that supported and protected his regime at the time. Um, and we see that there is a vicious circle that is being created because on one hand, fearing that the military would seize power when given uh, a lot of means, uh, states tend to limit how they equip them. And on the other side, less equipped military cannot face uh, jihadi groups and uh, have uh, efficient solutions to uh, the insecurity raging in the country. Yes, and this scene of soldiers announcing military takeovers in West Africa is an increasingly familiar sight. As I mentioned, we've seen similar scenes in Guinea, Mali and Chad. Why are we seeing more coups in West Africa and in the Sahel? Well, this is definitely a worrying trend uh, on institutional changes of government uh, in Africa, and especially in, uh, in Western Africa. Um, well, there are many reasons behind that, but uh, I can put three forward. The first one would be, um, in the case of the Sahel, uh, the deteriorating security situation. The context vary. Uh, in Mali and Burkina Faso, the coup happened as the security situation in the countries was deteriorating with increased terrorist attacks. Hundreds of civilians have died. Uh, the numbers of uh, displaced people and refugees has exceeded one and a half million uh, since the, the start of the, the, the crisis. And social problems are also growing uh, and thousands of schools are um, remain closed. Um, so the same scenario, um, as, we, as I said, in Mali, uh, where it was combined with uh, dissatisfaction following the results of parliamentary election when President uh, Ibrahim Boubacar Keita was also ousted out of power. Uh, in Guinea, uh, the former president, Afa Konde, uh, wanted to stay in power uh, by modifying uh, the, uh, the constitution, uh, which would give him the possibility to carry out a third term. Uh, the second a reason I would put forward uh, is also the deterioration of the social front. Um, most of these coups um, have uh, sort of responded to popular demand. So we've seen that many protests have been ongoing um, in the region. Uh, and uh, when uh, military um, access power, they're usually supported. Uh, by majority of the population. Uh, and finally, we see that there is, um, like the four men behind the coups have things in common. They're all young, educated officers, and behind this could be the need to break from a former aging ruling elite considered corrupt uh, and incapable of taking responsibility and effectively combating insecurity and responding to the needs of populations as well. Okay, Nadia Adam from the Institute for Security Studies. It was really good to get your analysis. Thank you again for that. Thank you.